Watch and Listen podcast. Myself, Matt Farah, and Mr. Cameron Weiss are going to get into it in a minute with uh, celebrity chef, Food Network star, uh, and watch enthusiast, Mr. Tyler Florence, who we're happy to have in the studio. But first, this episode of Watch and Listen is brought to you by our title sponsor, Crown and Caliber. Crown and Caliber is an online and in-person retailer of fine luxury watches from all the biggest brands, Rolex, Omega, AP, Paddock, you name it, they've probably got it. They keep thousands of watches in stock. Um, they're happy to help you over the phone, over the uh, internet or in person. Real watch enthusiasts down there. I bought a couple of watches for them myself and been uh, pleasantly, pleasantly impressed with the conditions of the watches, which in my cases were actually better than what was shown on the screen. Uh, Crown and Caliber also th- wants me to help you help them because uh, how do they get all these good watches? Well, from people like you. Maybe you've got a watch laying around the house that you haven't worn in a while. Maybe you want to turn it into cash. Maybe you want to uh, trade it towards a, a newer, better watch. Uh, Crown and Caliber has got you covered. No shady parking lot deals. It's all legitimate, above the water stuff. Is that an expression? Above the water? Above board? It's legit. It's legit. That's what I'm trying to say. Get this, right? For fans of the Watch and Listen podcast, I'm giving every single one of you, each of you, a one-time use $150 off code at Crown and Caliber. That's right. Use code MATT150, M-A-T-T-150, MATT150 at checkout, and you get $150 off your purchase at Crown & Caliber just like that. Spend it wisely. You only get it once. But each of you gets code MATT150, $150 off any purchase at Crown & Caliber. We are happy to have them as our title sponsor. So uh, I almost said the Smoking Tire Podcast. One day I'll get this right. The Watch & Listen Podcast is also sponsored by Beeline Coffee. Uh, I love the stuff. I drink it every single day. They really only pay me in coffee, if I'm honest. It's good enough that I'm like, "Ah, just keep your money and keep that coffee tree flowing. Uh, I now have my own roast. It's not a watch and listen roast. It's actually a smoking tire roast, but... It is delicious, it has a medium body, it is a light roast from high in the mountains of Costa Rica, and you can buy it at BeelineCoffee.com. You can also get uh, monthly subscription packages, which I have, so pounds of coffee show up in my house every month. It is great. I even sent a subscription to my dad for his birthday, a whole year of coffee, and uh, they have uh, several different roasts. They're always coming up with new stuff, and we drink it in the studio, I drink it at my house, I give it away as gifts. I am all about Beeline Coffee, Uh, and if you use code CHRONO, we're not mooching off the smoking tire code anymore, CHRONO, C-H-R-O-N-O, code CHRONO at Beeline Coffee will get you 15% off any order, no matter how big or small. Check them out, and now enjoy this episode of uh, the Watch and Listen podcast with Celebrity Chef entrepreneur, uh, Food Network, original Food Network star. He's been on TV for over 20 years and uh, happy to talk about watches with us. And we're happy to talk about watches with him, Mr. Tyler Florence. Thank you for joining us. I, I am. I'm, I'm so glad to be here, man. I'm, I'm in LA uh, shooting uh, Food Network Star That's with perfect. Food Network, and uh, my kind of town, man. Happy to be here. How are you? You guys are brilliant. Good? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Now, now that now that we have, you're the first celebrity to come into Studio B. So well, this is I'm nice. happy. You can christen it. I'm happy to be in Studio B. Studio A is nice. Studio B is nice. <laughs> You've Studio got, B has the butcher block table. I like that. You should yeah. appreciate this. I, I do it? appreciate that, man. Some, some fine fine craftsmanship, some fine wood craftsmanship here. I like that. You probably That's came good. in here wanting to talk about watches. I want to talk about food. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm getting hungry just thinking. <laughs> yeah. What's your... Uh, so let's take it back. I mean, yeah. I see you, you, let's go before watches, you know. South Carolina you're from, I hear? Yeah. I grew up in South Carolina. Um, I'm, I was, um, I'm from a small town called Greenville. Um, and if you're from Greenville, it's Greenville. 
Greenville, um, Greenville, yeah. Greenville, South Carolina, yeah. and uh, it's in the uh, northwestern part of the state. About a million and a half folks there. It's like the tech capital of the state now. I like so, that you called a million and a half like a little place. It's a, oh, well, big. you know, it's it's it used to be small, but a million and a half is is a fairly big. You know, they have more people in that you know the, the Greenville area than San Francisco, uh, for example. So it's pretty populated. Um, but then I moved to uh, Charleston, South Carolina, and I went Good to food town. great food town, the food town right now, isn't it? It's pretty hot, man. It's on fire, man. There are a lot of uh, you know the alpha and beta cities like you know new york los angeles chicago are really starting to be surpassed What's beta? By wait where's beta What's, well you know beta like atlanta yeah, Houston, well, ex- dallas ex- exactly yeah, okay. exactly right and then cities then, without oceans well <laughs> but then but then you start if you can start i mean you can start moving down just a population scale but then you start to get into the culture right and culture sort of surpasses a lot of that stuff like uh houston uh, uh austin houston's a great food town too but austin's amazing food town mm. Um, you know, um, um, Charleston is just sensational. Charleston's next level. Yeah, absolutely. It's great. And if you're from Charleston, it's like, where'd you learn to cook? Mama. Okay. <laughs> and there's your credential. Well, you know, um, I, so I grew up in the South. Uh, so the idea of like brown and good, right? This delicious, <laughs> crispy. There's butter and sugar. Full flavored, you know, like all the textures are there. It's, it's rich. Um, that's the foundation of how I cook. And, and then I moved from uh, Charleston. I, I hung out and I got um, a culinary degree and then a business degree in hotel and restaurant management because I think um, a successful chef should know how to run a business, right? A hundred percent. Exactly. 100%. A really good, talented chef can bankrupt the business in about six months. <laughs> Anybody can make a nice scallop. Show me a successful I'm not sure P&L. about that. Show me a successful p and I'll show you a really talented chef. Um, but then, uh, then I moved to uh, New York City after that, and I was in New York City for uh, about 15 years, uh, from uh, starting about 2000, uh, 1993 on. So that was kind of fun. Those were so good you years. kept coming out of the grime and into <laughs> into the Disneyland that is Manhattan well, now. Yeah, and, I, I, and and so I you know worked there for a long time. Started with Food Network in 1996. It's kind of as as a goof. I mean, they were just beginning. Uh, to kind of break out in LA and New York and Chicago and these kind of big markets, and uh, they didn't even have 24-hour programming. It was just uh, it was just sort of uh, very very simple. The production offices, the the production kitchen, and the studios were all kind of in one big space, almost like this, like Studio A and mm-hmm. Studio B, very similar to what we're sitting in today. Uh, and uh, and then all of a sudden they just kind of started to grow and started to pop, and I started to do that full time. And uh, this is my 21st year on television with those guys. That's so awesome. Isn't that wild? That's amazing. <laughs> How, who stays on TV for 20 years? I don't, I don't know. Like, well, I mean, so right now with you're like network. right, like you're. Are you like you're like a first generation Food Network for sure? Stuff, first right? generation. There's yeah. no doubt about it, man. What, how they, many generations would you say they're in now? Like four um, or five. That's really funny. Um, I've never really thought about it like that. So, so there was our generation. So that was like me and Emerald and Mario and Sarah Moulton. And uh, like Ming Sai, Ramsey, even right? Oh, uh, he's like way, two or three, way pre Ramsey. And Gordon Ramsey, he's not even really on. I wouldn't say he's like Food Network generation, but he's he's definitely like a third or fourth wave of like of culinary entertainment. That's for sure. I mean, he's sort of he's kind of the king of like reality television, yeah. food. Reality well, he's a television. good screamer. I mean, <laughs> he's a great screamer. Yeah, if but you he, can play a dick, I mean, <laughs> it's you're you're going to be on TV forever. Uh, because you know it, it's like the the Simon Cowell kind of thing, right? Like everybody, it's nice to hear s- somebody say something nice about somebody, but when somebody's honest, you know, yeah. and sometimes that really hurts. It's a little more entertaining, you know. It is, but it you ever find that the audience when they oh, they that relief in honesty to see Simon Cowell go, no, you're awful, you know that that relief when when. Simon Cowell's like nice to somebody. The audience goes, "You you selling out?" You right, know what right. I mean? Because he's just Whether honest. You criti- if you criticize anything, honestly, when you're nice about it, they don't like that. They well, because like the audience will agree with you, right? Yeah. Because if if they're terrible and somebody says something nice about it, well, you know, it was okay, but I, you know, some of the pluses I saw of like, come on, just like tell them the way it is, because you know the when you're honest with people like that, because you know when this react, because I'm hosting a reality show this week called Comeback Kitchen on Food Network. Was it and, people who have been ousted? Right. Well, so so the, the, well, the interesting thing about that, they 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 put a lot of time and money and effort into casting, right? So. Every season on Food Network Star, those twelve folks that are there to begin with, they're kind of picked over to pick through. You know, I mean, like they they've made it to that point of even qualifying to be on 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 camera. So then, when they start the editorial process to get to one, 
Sometimes they feel, and they always do, that that a few folks slip through the cracks that shouldn't necessarily have done so. So that's what this show is all about. It's called Comeback Kitchen. So I'm we take to find eight. you a good, a good. I'm trying to find a good visual for the people here. Oh uh, yeah, go. there you go. Perfect. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Awesome. Season twelve. Oh no. Well, that's yeah. Star season well, twelve. Well, that's like, so. Well, Comeback Kitchen is a precursor to Star, right? So the 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 winner of Comeback Kitchen gets a slot on. Oh, they gave us Star. a gallery. We're gonna have to go through the gallery. Oh my God! Look at all those folks. Look at those yeah. folks. <laughs> right, I, I've hung out with all of those people. Look at them, and uh, you know they're all interesting characters. And, and you know, th- to be honest with you, they're not necessarily all the best cooks on planet Earth, right? Or but, but <laughs> otherwise, they wouldn't be on Comeback Kitchen. They, let me they... well, well, let me tell you what I mean by that, right? Because you know, like Michelin caliber chefs, like the things that I do. I have a restaurant, a you know, really nice restaurant called Wayfair Tavern in San Francisco, and like the things that we cook in our restaurant, right? Um, it's so over the head of uh, 95% of the population. If you try to explain it to somebody, yeah. it's too complicated. It's, it's too art. expensive. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's an art of it. So so when I say not, not necessarily like the best chefs on planet Earth, it, like they, they're, um, uh, the folks at home that like to watch Food Network like to watch people that are relatable to them. And they also like to watch food that they can easily make. And I don't mean mm. simple food because I put a lot of technique into simple. I, I like to put a lot of technique yeah. And to making like a perfect pie crust. You have right? one, the one egg, right? It's the yeah. one egg thing. Right? Exactly. It's how many crazy ways can you make that one egg? I, I can make a masterpiece out of one egg. And and but the most important thing is like, do, but showing somebody the perfect way uh, to flip an over easy egg, right? Yeah, yeah. Like that's the kind of technique that's really really sticky with a really big audience. So um, those are the folks. So so the next Food Network star folks are always in that genre, right? Because they're looking for a Food Network star, not a Michelin caliber Michelin star chef. They're looking for a Food Network. Star. Well, so cooking on TV, like you know, in the car space, there's the the build shows, yeah, you know, right. and then there's the guy who actually the super rich guy is going to to have his builds done, and the sure. super rich guy isn't going to the TV guy. No, but the TV guy gets great ratings. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> you know? right. So, but in so, this, is what I'm saying. So anyway, so there, there, it's some really good folks. Um, um, I love the show. Um, to take it back to Food Network, I mean, it's, it's just it's my 21st year on television. Those guys. Um, so it was uh, back in the day. So I started in 1996. And uh, back then it was uh, Mario Batali and uh, Emeril Lagasse and Ming Tsai and um, and Sarah Moulton and a f- I'm sure a few other people that I'm blanking on right now. But that was that was kind of it. And then the second wave was probably Rachel Ray. That was probably oh, the yeah, second Rachel wave, Ray. right? Yeah, yeah. And then and then the third wave was probably Paula Dean, right? Yeah. And then and then it was probably Giada. Bobby Flay was in the Bobby first. Flay. Bo- yeah. Bobby Flay. No, Bobby was in the first round. I'm, yeah. I, I don't. I, I apologize for missing Bobby. The Iron Chef, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, then the, well. then there was well then there was the Iron Chef wave, right? So um, and I've never really thought about putting it in categories of like waves of like, mm. but I mean it's it's always been like somebody's network for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was Emerald's network for a while, and then it was Bobby's network for a while, and then it was my network for a while, and then it was Rachel's network for a while. And Paul's network, and then Giada's network, and then Guy's network. Now it's and, guys, right? Yeah, Pretty yeah, much. yeah, yeah. And and then and then it kind of flips around every now and then. So it's 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 just it's just nice. But um, I think having longevity and not really kind of burn yourself on the network um, is due to a couple of facts. You you always want to be flexible and be a good partner to the network, right? So if if sometimes like if you go into a pitch meeting, and this is kind of a good a good lesson for anybody on television, you got to be flexible, right? So if you go in locked and loaded with like ten ideas, and the network says you know what? We don't like any of them, but we like this for you. Mm. And you're like, oh, I don't really like that. Take it, right? Because you could change it once you're in the door. Right. So yeah. ra- ratings are everything, right? So when you have great ratings and, and you're you're kind of working with them what they have, working with what they have in a way, then you're you're proving your your viability to the network, which which is super duper important, right? Yeah, they and, need to make a business case for you. Absolutely. Yeah. And like then, then you just show you have range, that you can do a bunch of things, right? So I started off hosting a show uh, called Food 911, mm-hmm. um, where in, and we sort of uh, kind of ushered in the uh, rescue genre of cooking because there was quite a few <laughs> yeah. of those right the re- the rescue yeah. genre has done very well well I yeah i saw was... john taffer bought a jet <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, well it was me and it was curtis stone curtis stone had this like you know this uh rescue stone. yeah it was i think it was on like tlc or something right it was it was well so i um ours was completely preset i knocked in somebody's door uh curtis stone would literally you know talk to somebody in, in, in a grocery store walking around because hey can i kind of make you dinner anyway but uh <laughs> It, 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 it was it, it all it all it all worked but um the so it was that and then uh, we uh, started shooting the first version 
of this interesting show called Tyler's Ultimate, right? Yeah. And the first version of the show, we we only shot three seasons of it, um, but it was a travel show, and we would literally go to the ends of the earth just to see cool shit, right? <laughs> Sounds great. No, because yeah. so especially as a Sounds young great. chef in like early, my early 20s, yeah. and, and they were like, hey, what do you want to do? I'm like, I want to go travel. I'm like, where do you want to go? I want to go everywhere. Okay, great, let's go. I'm like, are you joking, man? That's a tough pitch these days. That's a That's a very hard pitch to make today. It's ex- because everything's expensive. Yeah, well, I, do you hear a lot of the the Bourdain of blank? I hear a lot of that crap. They want they they throw those in a lot. Well, you know, and 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 Tony's a really interesting guy, and and Tony's a guy who who I I used to be kind of tight with, and and I haven't really talked to him in a long time, um, but um, um, he's a great writer. He's yeah. a fantastic writer. He's a great storyteller. Mm-hmm. I really think that his whole persona is kind of what he knows, not what he knows how to do necessarily, right? Like his whole chef persona. You're is saying like, he's not a very good chef. No, I'm not. I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying if he is no, or I not. Don't. Honestly, I've, I've never really seen him cook anything. I, I don't think I've ever. Have you? Have you ever seen him cook anything? No, I saw him pretend to cook in the Big Short. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm, I'm not it. trying. To, I'm not trying to be a dick. No, 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 no. I like his show but, a lot, and I agree. Right, right, he's but, a great writer, and yeah. I, I think I enjoy. I very much enjoy his show. But his whole currency is like who he hangs out with. Yeah, right? yeah. so yeah. he's cool because he hangs out with Jose Andreas yeah. and and Eric Repair, and you know, like he's cool because he's uh, through association. But but more importantly than that, and and. You know, uh, to his credit, he's he sort of kind of backed down. He always says he's a former chef in a way, because right now he's he's an awesome television producer, and he's an amazing storyteller. And he kind of gets like this gritty side of life that not a lot of people do see in a way in a lot of his television shows. And I I love watching his, his shows. I he, he's so talented. He and I like how much leeway he gets from the network. I think he gets to do some shit that that other people don't get to get away with. Which you win a few Emmys, I guess. That's it's, the it's uh, called it's officially called carte blanche. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, yeah. You just do whatever. Yeah. You yeah. want to go there? Just go yeah, do it. Whatever it is, nice. you want to go to Russia? Go to Russia. Yeah. You want to go to Vietnam? Go to Vietnam. And, so back in the yeah. day, though, like twenty years ago, Food Network, like you always hear stories about like the beginnings of everything, and it's like the Wild West. Like, and you go, "Oh my God, you should have seen what they were doing like back then." And I can't believe we didn't all go to jail and uh, you know all that. Is that was it like that, or was it always very? Corporate. Well, I don't know about going to jail. No, we went well, to jail. Well, okay, I like, like, yeah, it like, some but it, but it was always been. I mean, it's food. It's not. It's not. Um, you know, it's not. Um, it's it, it. It never has been this point of of you know being so like salacious or yeah. or anything. I mean, so I mean, obviously, if you start tracking down some of the personal lives of, of of hosts over the years, I mean, everyone's had their kind of issues in a yeah. in a way, right? Um, but, uh, I mean, for the most part, like the, the table at food network has been, you know, getting bigger and, and every time you turn on the network, there's always something for somebody, there's something for everybody. And so, you know, where it doesn't matter, like, you know, what part of the world you live in or the country or, you know, what your political ideology is or who you like to hang out with, or there's always somebody kind of looks like you or in, like, and like wants to cook food, like the way you like to cook. And, and so it's just, it's, it's kind of fun. They do a really, really good job. I mean, well, I think what you're saying is character driven, right? You find the, you find the guy to yeah. relate to too, and then sure. you do follow everything that guy does, or, yeah. or girl, or woman. But, exactly, but, exactly. Yeah. But not on this show. It's cool, man. It's good. <laughs> um, well, yeah. Let's talk about watches. When did yeah. you get your first? Your first real? I mean, you rolled in here with a heavy hitter. That's a sea dweller. Um, yeah, this is a uh, this is my um, um, forty four millimeter deep sea sea dweller. It's super huge. <laughs> yeah, and this is generation one. So this is the first year that they launched this. This isn't the James Cameron model. Uh, this is like the first year they did this. And I think that I've had this for, I think I've had this for ten years. Well, you always see. I see. I notice Food Network Chef watches. It's yeah. pretty. It's but, a pretty common how, theme. Let's how tight this bezel is. Right? That's nice. I, don't you love do you that? Want, yeah. Do you have a bezel off? Oh my! I have the silent one. My <laughs> yeah, shit's right? old. I got an old one today. And that, nice. That's Netflix. No, no, nice I, and tight. Tight, tight, yeah. tight. People. So where like do you? That. You don't start with a deep sea. Where do you start? Um, well, l- let's just kind of go back for a second because I, you know, I, th- I think my first big watch was a Panerai, right? So I got, and you know, I bought the wrong model. Um, you know, Panerai. <laughs> Like, what's the wrong model? Well, well I, it's I the wrong the, model now. I got the well, I got the forty-two millimeter. I, I can't remember exactly what uh, what the mechanism was, but I, I bought it in Dallas a long time ago. I think I'd got my first big paycheck, and and always been kind of crushing on watches. And you know, forever kind of growing up, I I was a, sort of a sport. I'm kind of an active guy, so um, I I, uh, I wore G shocks like most of my early life because it, it's just a dope watch. Represent, yeah, I love G-Shocks a good G shocks for hot. I love a G shock, right? I still so, have one. Yeah, did you wear a G shock like to the gym or something? To still do. You still have one well, today? I, I, I wore a G-Shock for a long time just because I could wear it in a kitchen and just 
pulverize it. Mm-hmm. And it had a timer, and you know, so it was it was a good watch. It had a good light on it. Um, so I wore this forever. And then when I got my first paycheck, so I guess this must have been early 2000s. It must have been like 2000, 2001, 2002. I got my first fat paycheck, right? So I got this 42 millimeter uh, Panerai. And I can't remember the exact model, but I was, but God, was it a beautiful watch? But the weird thing about it, I I went to I I uh, went to this like desk side uh, editors meeting uh, in New York City not too long after that, and I remember like one of the editors at GQ kind of clown, clown me because I had the forty two millimeter, not the forty four one. I had the little one. <laughs> he goes, he got the little one. She got in the big one. So then I bought like then I, then I bought a bunch of. Panerai's. I think I, I have four now. I have a beautiful titanium. Um, was it like the little guy, like the little radio mirror here? Uh, no, it wasn't a radio mirror. Although I, I do, I do have a, I do have a limited edition radio mirror that was only like twelve hundred units made. I, uh, yeah, I, I see that uh, that um, split chronology here. piece. The one over to the left. A little bit. I have that one. This I, guy. Yeah, I've got that one. This yep. is very nice. Here we go. Hang on. Let's pull this pull this yep. guy up here in our our system of. Yeah, that is actually very nice. Yep, the I own two that knobs. One. That's a good one. Yep, I own that one, and and that one's got a really cool alarm on it, right? And the alarm just buzzes and it buzzes really loud. So really? that's the uh, the uh, that's the the dual to- the dual time zone GMT watch, which is kind of hot. And the flyback wheel is pretty awesome on that one too. And if you flip it over, the mechanisms are just beautiful. I don't, I don't know how many jewels it has in the back, but it's like, but the but it's just it's it's beautiful. It's, it's a cool a great watch. watch actually. It's a great watch. Really it's forty two. You know, so that th- th- that that was my second Panerai that I bought, and then I. I, I got a. I realized they looked a little small in my hand. Like I'm, I'm a pretty big guy. So I'm like six foot tall. I'm probably two thirty. I'm a big guy. You got big wrists. I got. I got, I'm. I'm what they call big boned. <laughs> uh, but uh, so th- then I moved into a, a 44 millimeter, and then I, I feel like I bought their first like titanium version because it was really light. I'm, I'm not super prepared with all these like. I'm just, no, you don't. I'm not but, trying to throw you. Uh, but this is hot uh, because we can. About it. We you, can find you it. See an image of it. Point it out. No, we, we can find it. Up. So it was. It was a 44 millimeter right-handed. Um, and uh, and and can I tell oh, you something? Oh, it's a lefty. No, 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 no. It wasn't. It wasn't. I, but I, I've got a left one. I ha, I do have a left one. I have um. I have the 48 millimeter <laughs> left-handed. Uh, 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 pan right that I got that it's one. Lefty, in I support that decision. Yeah, no, it's all of, about the lefty stuff. So, so the but the titanium watch, I actually bought that in Florence, Italy, uh, at the original Panerai shop across Is from that the on Duomo, the Ponte Vecchio. Ponte oh, Vecchio, no, it's, no, right, it's a store by the Duomo, right? Yeah, it's a, right, yeah, right, yeah, it's yeah. right across from the Duomo. Yeah, so I mean that that was like that was one of those things. I just felt like okay, I have fucking made it, dude. Oh my <laughs> I god, I didn't appreciate. I don't think Full when chub. I was a kid that the Ponte Vecchio was all watches. <laughs> Right, it is like the Ponte Vecchio. For those who don't know, I'm pulling up a picture of it. Sure, is in Florence, yep. and it's a bridge. It's a bridge. That's a mall. Yeah, and and but it's not just any mall. It is a mall that. Oh boy, I made the image way too big. It's a mall that exclusively. Sorry, I fucked yeah. up. That exclusively sells watches. So mm-hmm. all these little shops are different watch stores, which is pretty pimp. I it's remember that. I was there when I was 18. That's uh, that's the one thing that I remember from Italy. Of course. Yeah, I, yeah, I saw all the sites, but I remember the watches. Do you want to have a store in here, Cameron? I I don't think it's for Weiss. No, no. Pull up, pull up the an image of the original uh, Panerai store in in Florence, Italy, because it's just super duper special, and I just love the brand, man. Because it's you know, it's, it was, uh, um, and I probably got all the dates wrong. I'm I'm really good at bro science, which is like just me making shit up. It's here, though, um, isn't that it? Yeah, that, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, it's it's a beautiful store. I mean, it was just it was that was probably the first like really special watch experience I had. I thought that not was a amazing. great image. I apologize, but no, the okay. store is very cool looking. Yeah. So 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 I I got that and then um and then and then what happened? So I was like was deep into that and then about uh about a uh about a Mueller um the Mueller oh, got How do you st- like those? Um you know I thought it was a, it was a it was a King Mueller. I don't I don't you know I I it was a watch that I got married in. Will you do me a favor? But this this is so rad, by the way, because don't <laughs> you love this. don't you love Google Images? Isn't this brilliant? Yeah, just look up Tyler Florence wedding, and then and then see if you can like zoom in to my, to my wrist because I'm, oh I'm wearing I'm wearing a we gotta find some like pap photos here. Yeah. Is this how? Yeah, I, I don't know if you can <laughs> or not, but see. but uh, see if you can find. But anyway, so um, well, uh, your wedding it, looks very pimp, sir. Yeah, Where well, it was, it was pretty pimp. Uh, right there, top top row. Second one over there. I wouldn't. I don't know if that's my wrist or not. It's but like, like cake cutting, something like that. But anyway, <laughs> it's, it's a small it's, picture. That's gonna be tough. Wife. I don't know if it's gonna blow up or not. No, it's not. Yeah, because I'm in my Sorry. left hand. It's not gonna say. But anyway, so I, I had this like beautiful Mueller that was great. It ended up getting stolen out of my car. I was oh, very sucks. bummed out about that. Yeah, I've lost a few watches. Um, I don't know what happened to it. Yeah. We can. Does, I had this Cartier um, um, uh, Santos 100. God, that was hot. 
Yeah, we I talked about that, that one a yeah. lot because we've been doing, you know, this is the beginning of the show, so we're starting wide and then zoning in. So it's been like history of watches and this, and the Santos keeps coming up. Yeah, man, the Santos 100. That God, I love that watch. And oh, so uh, you know, and, and sometimes like, especially when I travel so much. Like last year, I was um, uh, not going where I was going, just up in the air. I was up in the air for 90 days last year. Oh my God! Wow. So when so I'm you're in a, like the the, the the, have you seen the movie Up in the Air with George Clooney? Yeah, make you really depressed. Well, sort <laughs> yeah, dude. When it, when I when I get, I'm about to crack in the high season of my travel year just because I'm shooting great food truck race and I just got a new show on Food Network. I can't talk about it yet. Congratulations, thank you Whatever. very much. Maybe, but it'll but it's another travel show. But anyway, my, my point is like like when you when you check into a hotel at like one o'clock in the morning because you just got off a plane and you have to go straight to set and take your bags with you because you're leaving that afternoon. Sometimes you leave a a, a, oh, no. a phone charger in the wall. And you sometimes leave a watch. and sometimes you leave a fifteen thousand dollar watch there too, right? <sighs> and then and then you call them back and hey, you've seen that watch? I'm like, no, 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 of course I not. I haven't seen. I haven't anything. seen anything. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, so so I lost that one, right? So uh, so then uh, then um, I've got I've got a uh, I bought a big Bell and Ross. Remember the big like oh, the, the big, square guy, the square one. Yeah, it, it was a little too big. It was kind of dope and was super popular for a while. These, uh, actually, I love these black I got that one. black. Stand- no, no, it's, this, it's the stainless steel with the black thing. This guy? No, oh, it's the one. That, yeah, whatever. It's that one, but it doesn't have the the orange second okay. hand. But like, pretty but that, close. That's it. Yeah, yeah. these look great on everyone else. When I put one on myself, I go, oh, I don't get it. it I, I look, yeah, you know what? I look ridiculous in it. It's just kind of one of those watches that you know, um, it was popular for a while, and then you know, the too big thing. You know, there was the forty four millimeter, yeah, then yeah. the forty eight millimeter, then the you ever rock a U boat? You ever see one of them? <laughs> that's, Get that's it cracking so into the fifties? Stupid, yeah, fifty two <laughs> mil. Like what? That's like driving how, a car with rims your... into the thirties, right? When you crack trays, <laughs> yeah. I drove a car on thirties once. It was I drove a. Do you know what a donk is? It's a wagon wheel, man. Do you know what a, a donk is? I drove a man. donk on thirties. Yeah. It was a hilarious. I've got 22, 22 inch wheels on my on my on my truck, and it, it, it's a, it was like a fucking wagon wheel. Dude. Yeah, it's hilarious. It's Are they like stock? Or you're on rims? Uh, no, th- well, they're, they're, they're stock. I, I've got a, uh, I have a, um, a, a GLE AMG 43 SUV. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, yeah, I love yeah. it. Just got it this year. Yeah. Um, the I, regular roof or the sport roof? I got the sport roof. Oh, yeah. Do you um, like it? I got, I got the, bl- they got the, what, the, what was it, the midnight package, a black and black package? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, the I. The none more black package? You know what? Yeah, I really, really like because I, I had I had a I had a I had a nine eleven Carrera, just a base model. I had that one for about three years. The lease was up on it, and dude, I, that was they're great, fun car to ride. Mm-hmm. Destroyed my spine. Oh, really? A horrible ride. I mean, like because there's no suspension, you feel yeah. every single bump. Well, LA is like off roading, you know. Yeah. Right. Right. Kind and of, and, and why so SUVs and, are good here. Yeah, this is the, the wrong show. We record a car show in the. <laughs> <other> <laughs> <laughs> I I couldn't. I autopiloted my way into a car yeah. show. There's cars in here. This was my office until it became Studio B. I like it. I like Studio B. But uh, oh, yeah. So anyway, so I, I, had, I had that Bell and Ross for a while. Uh, I still have it. I still have the Bell and Ross. And then. Um, God, what's in my is it, then? And then I got this Rolex. Let's see, let's see right I like, here. I like can this we, Rolex a lot. Man. Throw that, yeah, under, yeah, yeah. throw that under the under the dealio. Yeah, so I got I got that one. It, it, it you, should be in the is the square. Put it. Uh, oh, right. oh boy, have we now. moved? We've moved. Have we moved. Oh no, sorry. There you go. There you close. Oh, close, close. There it is. Yeah, so I got that. One. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there so we this go. is this is kind of my Actually, daily the light driver. Looks better. Yeah, yeah. The light looks better. So let's talk about watches in a kitchen. Yeah. Because I started with Rolex, Submariner was my first nice watch, and it ruined me as to the non-waterproofness yeah. of other watches. This yeah. watch in a kitchen, this well, is deep perfect. Sea, yeah. That watch on the fucking that, Titanic. That can go in the dishwasher. <laughs> it can go anywhere. That watch, if you yeah. have a dive accident, that watch is coming home on your dead body. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So as a, as a chef, what is the watch to what is the watch to wear in the kitchen? Well, stainless steel is a really great thing to wear just, just because it, a lot of things. It's really humid, it's really sweaty, and, and there's a lot of water, right? So so rubber bands, leather bands, they kind of collect bacteria and they'll start to stink. Even like like really great like NATO straps and stuff, because uh-huh. I'll occasionally take that band off and kind of rock a NATO strap for like the summer. Yeah. Uh, but then it just starts to stink after a while, and then you know, and then like it smells so bad in the middle of the night it wakes you up, and then like <laughs> and then your girl smells yeah. it, and yeah. then other people smell it, and, like fucking change Snuggling your watch. goes really bad. Thanks, dude. Do you stinks. leave your watch on? You twenty you're twenty four seven with the uh, watch? You don't take it off. No, night? no, I, I I take it off, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah. It it just stinks. Um, so so then I, I think I think the stainless steel is kind of the cool thing, but then. You know, I think watches are kind of cracking into a whole new world of technology that is just sort of 
you know, genre changing in a way, right? I mean, like the smartwatches. Smartwatches are becoming so smart, right? So, so I, I'll, I'll give you. Like, I'll give you a yeah, quick give story. Me an example. What All right, mean? so I'll give you a quick story. So, so you know Barry Cohen is. He you know, he was the CEO of Luminox. You know, uh, Luminox? yeah, I know Luminox. Sure. Luminox, yeah. So, so he was a really good friend of mine, uh, and uh, and he uh, he sold the company a couple of years ago. And uh, um, and we're like I I've, I've collect motorcycles. You know, can I tell you I you stopped, collect motorcycles. I stop buying watches. We gotta when I hang got, out, man. I stop buying. Yes, we should. <laughs> I stop buying watches when I got to California because I started. I realized that a watch and a motorcycle kind of cost the same thing fifteen grand <laughs> thousand fucking yeah. bucks. Like you walk into you walk into a watch store. I mean, if you really think about it, man. I mean, you got to be like like a a uh, uh, a nut for just like pure craftsmanship right yeah not even necessarily bells or whistles but just the fact that it was handmade by somebody dude right? i've seen paddocks that don't even have a fucking second hand in their forty thousand. <laughs> this is what i'm saying for what, for like, what? like you yeah. walk in a store i'm like oh man how much is that it's like eighteen thousand yeah. bucks yeah. uh what does Oof. it do uh well it tells time yeah i'll take it yeah. i'll take it right for eighteen thousand bucks at the ducati dealer you're going 180 miles an hour see this is what i'm talking about so then all of a sudden so i i, I I kind of got off like the heavy purchase because for a while there, like every, with every deal, I'd get a new watch. Like, right? Oh, so, like for yourself, like you, as a reward. Yeah. Not you know, like, like a little bonus. The, not on the network, on no, you. Well, yeah. But it's like, so every, yeah, yeah. So like I, I'd get a new show, I'd get a watch, I'd get a book <laughs> deal, I'd get a watch. Because the thing about like money, money vanishes, right? Uh -huh. But if you've got a watch, like I don't remember what paycheck bought me that Rolex, but I got that Rolex and that money's way gone, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's kind of like this one thing you just kind of hold on to forever. <laughs> yeah. That kind of means something. You're not, it's not, yeah, I hate buying crap. I'd rather buy nothing and yeah. buy an expensive watch yeah. and have cheap sneakers and have an expensive watch. I'm coming I mean? from cars. I'm with yeah. you, a hundred percent. For me, I ran out of space. I got I had seven yeah. cars and then went. Well, this is a problem. So now I got five motorcycles. Yeah. I'm the same thing. So anyway, so so uh, <laughs> but uh, babe, so, so, so let me tell you a story about how this is trans transitioning, and in a way that I think is interesting. I don't know if it's if it's if it's the end all be all, but I feel like we have to pay attention to it as watch enthusiasts, right? Because the technology is getting really smart. Because uh, I actually just I just bought a new watch and it's it's actually being shipped to my house today. So so Luminox, right? So Barry Cohen, really really great friend of mine. This is an iconic current, classic current um, Luminox. Yep. Yeah. This is this is a this is an American success story, right? So Luminox, uh, I don't I don't know, and again I'm I'm like Captain Bro Science, so all my information is going to be up. But uh, but this is a classic American American story. It's been around for I would say a few decades. Um, a, a guy from you know had had um, had a connection with someone in the military. Said, hey, let me make a really good military watch. They love it. He he bought a bunch of them, and then he started making like retail versions, and then it became really kind of hot. So so I think that the the Apple Watch is going to start to kill a lot of watches. Is that well, that's sort the of story? Is that yeah. anything that's like not a super expensive watch? Right. The Apple Watch is just eating it alive. That's like what I'm fashion saying. Fashion brands are done, yeah. and yeah, yeah. I mean, so Cameron would probably know he's. he's yeah, that, that's my thought exactly. I th I think it's great for the high end market actually. It's great for the high end yeah. market, right? Because like the five hundred dollar watch is going away, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because for five hundred bucks, you can get an Apple Watch, and my Apple Watch is dope. Yeah. My Apple Watch, my cell phone celebrities buy wear Apple watches. Like you don't have, you know what I mean? You don't need to get a Paddock or, or whatever. You know, you uh, Pharrell or whatever wears an Apple Watch, so you can yeah. be in that club. At yeah, that it, price it's point, a pretty good you know? status symbol. So I, I remember I was doing an event. Um, uh, for Salesforce in San Francisco, and it was um, it was like a huge convention, and um, and I, I Ubered in, and then my wife picked me up, and and it was at the end of the day, it was like nine thirty, ten o'clock at night, and she like in and, and it was mayhem in San Francisco, tons of traffic, and she goes, I'm on this corner, and as she said, corner, my phone died, right. But then my my uh, Apple Watch three kind of immediately kind of picked it back up again, and the independent cell signal. And that I just called her for my watch. Oh, do and you so, have the separate one that can make calls now? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, like yeah. a I new got, thing, right? For the, this year, the yeah, the, calls yeah. now. Yeah, and and I think that was the coolest thing uh, that Apple actually released this year. I've got the iPhone ten. Don't love it. It's okay. I don't think it's worth the money. But the iPhone, the Apple Watch three. I mean, yeah, that with cell that, service that fixes the problem with the watch, right? Because you can go hot. out without a, without the phone now. Yeah, right? totally. And 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 so. To, like the idea of not being distracted by your watch to me is something I'm really interested in. Not, I'm sorry, your phone. I'm actually really interested. Not being distracted by your phone is something yeah, yeah. I'm really interested in, right? So does the watch relieve you from the phone? Yeah, man. It so, does. So I and I have it today, and I actually don't. I don't. So I stopped. I stopped traveling um, with more than one watch. Okay. Because I leave. Because you would lose them. Yes, I've yeah. lost. I've lost. I've lost. <laughs> 
three. Oh, I no. want to pour something out for my dead homie. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! But I've lost. I've lost three. Right. I lost. I lost my Cartier. I lost my Mueller. Uh, I lost sorry. my titanium. The original watch I got from Florence, Italy. Ugh. Lost that one. So I because I used to I used to I used to just ball, man. Did you like, go with the roll? You went with the with the fat watch roll? Yeah, roll? but then but then w- w- where? Like shooting great yeah. food truck race in, in, in Des Moines? Come on. <laughs> Fucking leave them in the they safe. They can't appreciate a Cartier. Leave, in leave them in the <laughs> leave them in the safe. Leave them in the not there's nothing yeah. against Des Moines, but just leave them in the yeah, safe. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Who are you showing off for? So anyway, so I stopped. So I'm, I'm so I anyway. I'm in LA. I only brought that one watch, but but um, my daily driver for a while, and I I don't travel with a watch that I have to plug in because it's one more stupid thing that yeah. I have to keep charged. Yeah. yeah. But um, my daily driver at home is my Apple Watch, right? Mm-hmm. And and so but 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 which is which is I mean to me it's just kind of one of those things because it's like notifications or it's pictures or it's emails or whatever and it, and I, and it keeps my phone in my pocket versus me like walking around like a yeah. dope staring at a screen all day long and I hate doing that. Well, and my it's, kids it hate that too. In the beginning that when yeah. you, well, the watch was tied to the phone that yeah. it actually made the thing worse. But now with the independence plan and you can it can do some a bunch of stuff that it couldn't do without a phone before. Sure, right. But right? when when it's tied together, it's just another it's another beep 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 beep. Yeah. It's another like a notification, right? Yeah. That's kind of all it was. But now the fact you have independent cellular service yeah. on it, you can leave this dopey, you know, like brain suck at home or or in the car or whatever, and kind of move about your day. And if someone texts you or if someone calls you, you can just pop in your headphones and make a phone call, yeah, and yeah. It, it syncs up wireless. That beautiful. seems nice. Yeah, yeah, it totally. seems nice actually. Did um, you when you rock the Apple Watch? You don't do you don't. You don't go two wrists, right? You don't also wear a Swiss watch on the other wrist. Don't don't make that face. People do that. I don't. Shit. Yeah, I don't. I wish I knew what you're talking about. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. Should I? No, I mean, no, I no, no, no. Don't do that. Yeah. See, no. Don't do that. Okay. Unless okay. you're a watch salesman, I don't think you need to wear two at a time. Well, but people think, do. Yeah, people people like to show off or whatever. So anyway, so I I just bought this watch. I, and and can I tell you, I don't know why. Wait, I showing me it. pictures from your phone doesn't help. No, no, I'm, gotta... I'm I'm showing you from Amazon. So I, I just oh. got this because, um, because I you know I I wanted one. Um, and again, I have a big wrist, right? So the one thing I don't like about the Apple Show me Watch. So I can put it on the screen. Very good. Yeah, this has got the new uh, Sunto. What's it called? Uh, the, it's the uh, the Spartan Ultra HR S U U N T O. It's Oops. a brand from Finland. Really? Yeah, it's fantastic. These are super. I feel dope, like this dude. is the kind of thing they would know in Finland, right? Yeah, they make uh, they make Spartan great dive Ultra. watches and navigational uh, type watches, compasses. They were actually they they started by making compasses. So I have a an old dive company. Spartan Ultra. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they they don't they don't fuck around. It's an amazing company. So anyway, yeah. so I I just got this because like so what I like about my Apple Watch is uh, is 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 it's how technologically advanced it is. What mm-hmm. I don't like about it is how dainty it looks on my arm. Right. Yeah. Again, it's a forty-two millimeter. It's a they small, little, make, tiny square. Yeah. Make right. a giant, a giant well, one. Well, right? well, I, I well think and that, they're trying to be unisex as well. Yeah. They don't want to. Good point. You know, well, so it has to kind of bridge that gap and have feminine and masculine fingers crossed they make the uh ipad pro version of the <laughs> apple watch and actually take the leap and make kind of make it bigger make it, yeah. because like because to me like like and this is not a gigantic watch but this is a baller watch so anyway so my long story short about all this stuff right because like you know like people that that um i love when my apple watch tells me it's time to stand up right and go for a walk around the block, right? Yeah. Or just cause, because then it, it it constantly keeps me uh, uh, reminded that I need to be somewhat physical throughout the day. Do you and count de- steps too? Well, th- so this is what I'm saying. So the new the new digital technology and watches and like the five hundred dollar. How much is this one? Like five? What is it? Uh, what is that? Eight hundred. Eight fifty. 850. It's a little, yeah, it's a little more expensive than those, but it but does that, look pretty dope though. And I assume dope. all of these faces are that those are just the different screens that you get on the same yeah, face. It's right? it's all, yeah, it's yeah. all it's all completely digital, right? So yeah. so all those things are kind of like high tech cartoons, right? You can actually make it do anything you want. But uh, but this is what I'm saying. So so having this having this on your wrist, I think will do a lot of things, and and it'll it'll be this butterfly butterfly effect that I I think will almost get rid of your personal doctor, right? Your your internist, like that first person that you call. Your yeah, you general, only go for the specialist now. Well, well, your general practitioner, right? You know the person that you call and say I got a cold or I need a flu shot, like. 
the, having a medical device, and I think that's kind of more what's is that what we're calling this? Telling a time. Device? Well, this is what I'm saying. It's more of a mm-hmm. medical device now than it is a time telling machine, right? Because telling time, it's simple, right? But the fact that this can monitor your heart rate, some can monitor your glucose level. Um, they can, they can, uh, you, you can uh, with the app, you can kind of pump in, you know, your own BMI, and Have they you can, figured out yeah. blood pressure yet in this. Yeah, how yeah, well you're you sleeping is a big one. Right. The sleeping one I use yeah. on my phone, and the phone is on the bed and like senses it. It's actually a pretty gangster app. Yeah. I like that one a lot. This is what I'm saying. So this, this, is, cool. this, is, this is where this technology this. is going. So so, so 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 let me let me take this back to my buddy Barry Cohen, right? Because like because and he just sold the brand, but 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 he he's so convinced that 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 well it's split. We've, we've had a lot of philosophical conversations about watches tonight, and I love this guy to death. But but he thinks there will always be a place for dials, and I'm telling him in this particular price category. I think it's a dying breed for an analog dial. You for mean. an analog it's dial possible. of this particular breed, right? Because oh. because for five hundred or eight hundred bucks, you can get such a high tech that yeah. moves way and beyond. without the movement. Who cares about the dial? That's his argument, right? It's that we care about a dial because we we care us nerds yeah. care about the movement yeah. behind the dial. Yeah. Well, well, without a movement, would you know? Would you rather if the, if it's important to have a dial? Why aren't you wearing a quartz watch? Right, you know, sure. So that I see his point. Yeah. But then, he makes but then, a great point. So I mean, th- th- and th- so think about like the butterfly effect of all this stuff. Right? Like, like Tesla is sort of like doing away with the idea of blue book value, right? Be- because because, uh, because <laughs> or making money on cars. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're selling fucking flamethrowers, Tyler. <laughs> Elon Musk made the, five million dollars in flamethrowers. That, that's ironic flamethrowers. That's for the boring company. But you can't tell me he's not. <laughs> Fucking clever genius. Oh, he's hysterical. I mean, dude, a guy yeah, yeah. who takes space balls inside jokes and yeah. puts that shit in real products, uh-huh. that's a guy I want to hang out with. Absolutely. And and even even with this rocket that you guys see the rocket over LA? The, dude, dude. Yeah. My, I didn't know what was going on, and my yeah. girl calls me. He's like, look up, look up, we're yeah. gonna fucking die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what, so what, what what was it? His sweet was his genius. It was like, what is like like nuclear rockets? Uh, from Korea or, or something. It was something hysterical that that it said. You know, it's just our our big a, F, got, F1 rocket or whatever. Dude, it was. I got. Hang on, I'll find. I got a sick picture of it. It was one of my of what was, the of uh, the lo- rocket. It was oh, like here, look. Yeah, dude, that's yeah. your picture. You that was that? mine. Yeah, it was dude. one of my. I think I think this is my second or third most liked Instagram pic. Yeah, sixteen thousand yeah. likes. That's a lot for me, by the way. That's a lot. It's a lot, I'm dude. Low, I'm DL. I'm that's low. a lot. No, it's, that's, you're that's, smoking that's, me on Instagram right now. <laughs> Twenty years on Food Network. I'll do that. Looks like a big sperm. I actually it, had a guy at Tesla explain to me um, how what's happening in this photograph because because it, it is it's weird as fuck, dude. What is that ball, right? Okay, so, okay. okay. So if right. we're, what we're looking at, if you're for so, those of you listening to the audio only version, is we're looking at the famous uh, picture I took, but it's the, what it, the fucking rocket looked like over LA. So yeah. the front, the head of the sperm, if you will, uh-huh. is the actual rocket. Uh-huh. Okay. The thing following behind the actual rocket, those are the boosters that turn around and fucking fly home and land. Don't you love this guy? They fly home and land. And then the explosion back here is yeah. where the separation happened. Oh, okay. But the momentum carries them to here sure. for a while. Sure. And they slow down on their own a bit before turning around and going home. Don't you love? Don't you People love this man? People and science Dude, is I'm, crazy. I'm telling you, I I grew up I grew up without without ATM cards. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, I I grew up with nothing, dude. Yeah. I mean, like, it's, it's, we yeah, are in a, a wild fucking world right yeah, now. Yeah, wild. I totally world, get your friend's argument about the the vanishing quartz fashion watch makes sense. Yeah. If I was in that market, if I was looking for a five hundred dollar watch, I'd just buy an Apple. But watch then you might, uh, if you don't need a face anymore, you might not need anything. You might not need any kind of digital display. It could all just transmit to a cell phone or a computer right. But the somewhere. point is, you don't. He doesn't want to pull his phone out. But but, still don't so, wanna... but but this is what I'm saying. So I think cell phones. I think the shape of cell phones are going to change because like yeah. this is this is. I mean because so so th- so this is. I have the iPhone 10, right? So this is their latest version of a product you launched in 2007, and for the most part, it hasn't really changed, right? I mean, um, like the yeah. shape has changed. It's gotten bigger. The same yeah. way 911s have changed. Well, well, <laughs> but, and those those are those are classics. So if you say if you and and I and that's a great analogy. This is a classic iconic brand. Yeah. So why change? Why mix it up? But um, but I still think people are really ready for this like Jetsons world. And now this technology just feels a little a little stayed. It just feels Does a little it? yeah. I mean, I I mean so. so yeah, with iPhone ten like so. T- 
tell me tell me why it's so spectacular. The, oh, I don't know. I don't have one. The but. camera <laughs> the camera's amazing. It takes yeah, really yeah. really great video. The the the, the face recognition is a little creepy. Whatever it is, but this is what I'm saying. So I think. Um, um, and I think it'd be a really, really good challenge is to take take the idea of the five hundred, eight hundred dollar market, right, and create a cell phone watch that you don't need this thing for at all, at all, and well, just reshape this whole thing. Inherently, because, though, isn't there going to be an AI. issue with the size of the display? What's, what, what's I'm saying? So, so AI technology, right? So now I, I can talk, and I just got the new Apple Pod. I, I'm an Apple fanboy, dude. I don't want boy, that dude. fucking thing listening to me in my well, house, you, you man. Can, you can turn Weird it off. stuff happens around me, dude. I'll be talking about something, and it'll show up on a website five minutes later. I won't have been searching for it. Well, they're listening to me. It's, man. it's a little yeah. creepier <laughs> in like the Android ecosystem because yeah. like they, they don't sell you products. They actually take your information, yeah. sell it to other people, yeah. and that's their business model. But with Apple, they sell you products, so they don't need it as much, right? So is it interesting to them? them? It's it's not it's not their main business model. Do they do it? I don't know, probably, right? But 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 my my point of all this stuff, like like if 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 you had to think through, okay, what's the watch of tomorrow, right? Because the watch they have this, you know. Uh, I think it's an eleven thousand dollar Rolex I've got on my wrist, right? Like that, it's it's a it's a lovely, lovely watch. It's incredibly one dimensional, right? It doesn't really do um, yeah. anything, right? Yeah, but at the same time, it inspires a feeling. It inspires a feeling. I think there's a very specific set of like jewelry that's okay for a man to wear. It's yeah. a buggy know? whip. It's a buggy whip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a buggy whip. Yeah, uh, but. I don't know. It's I a still, bayonet. I still like them. It's a bayonet. I'm yeah. not saying I I've, I've got a lot of them. I like I, like I have them. I you should see my I got intro. some old fucking cars. Yeah, no, know? I like I know I'm gonna say I like all this shit, but I mean but like as a as a as a fan, yeah, as a as a student of the genre, being able to predict the next evolutionary branch is is an interesting yeah. conversation, no? Have you seen yeah. or have you seen the um disc like sensors that sort of glue temporarily onto the back of your dope Rolex and then Bluetooth transmit that data to your phone so your cool watch can be as smart as a cool watch can be as far as gathering your health data. Uh, I I have I mean it, it, I don't I don't think it's compelling enough for me to go to go get it right but um, but I, I do like so this is but this is really really interesting because I would tag Hoyer is 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 making like real big moves into the the digital frontier um so is omega they're making huge pushes if you see and i'm not a i'm not What's a omega huge and tag doing with digit oh are they do they have a smart watch yeah yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, oh, they do? So, so is oh, brightling yeah. so, so they're, they're never, all they're all sort of kind of getting into the game as far as kind of what this what digital smart watch yeah like. so they're kind of hybrids in between like digital and analog what does an omega smart watch look like do any of these look like it oh uh, the, the swatch group has a big leg up because of the technology oh, that they've developed it? for the uh the apple uh, for Apple as well, yeah. So they did all the the touch screens and everything. So every time Apple is selling a, a product with the touch screen, I don't even know what I'm. Swatch doing. Group is actually uh, they they design that yeah. Swatch Group. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. And 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 I used to have swatches when I was a kid, man. I thought swatches were, swatches were amazing. That would be a good brand to bring back, don't you think? Yeah, Swatch. They're still They're around. Still, they just dude, I see sw- there's a Swatch store in LAX. Yeah, I walk by it's, it every time. It's not it's quite as interesting as it used to be. I don't sure. think right. uh, the. All the unique but, but just, but collector just like, editions were were pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, but like back in the day with like the jellies and like the, yeah. the switched out with like you know uh, uh, wristbands and that kind of stuff. I mean, but it, you but, are a tastemaker, sir. You can <laughs> start rocking swatches on yeah. Food Network; they Maybe. will follow. But but I, I'm I'm like to me like I I I think that that if you could you could create um, enough interesting information that is that is uh, powered by AI and voice activated command. Where I could say, "Hey, read me my emails, right? Or read me this text message, whatever it is, right?" Versus like, like because the entire world yeah. stares down all day long at this dumb little device oh, in their pocket. Wait. So this could literally set the world free by having a medical device that 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 speaks to the cloud or however you want to describe it. <laughs> Call me an ambulance, right? No, but <laughs> this, well, this is what I'm yeah. saying. Like, so, so you could you could have this you could have this like little earpiece and just like have this thing do stuff for you. Mm-hmm. Wait, this 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 can do it, right? Yeah. So and really make this kind of cool modern Dick Tracy watch. That everyone's looking for, man. I'm I'm not against like, that like, per se. By Apple the way, this watch, I think Apple this tag, the, the tag connected watch, which we have right here. I think you take this whole f- face out. Yeah, you remove this analog face and you pop in a complete digital face. Oh, that's hot. So, so no, no, I, that's so you, that's a digital face that's on this one. 
Oh, but their big uh, their big push is that you can actually trade it out. At some point, you can take the watch out of there, and yeah. you can trade up to a mechanical watch. Okay, you, when you oh. want to have a mechanical watch, they okay. have one that will. And fit it's in all there. interchangeable. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. So, but for this one, I guess I don't, I don't know where this is. Twenty two hundred dollars. You're yeah. that, you're getting a fully digital. That's smart completely watch. digital. Okay. Yeah, yeah. When you're looking at a picture of it, it's hard to. Say. <laughs> or maybe for, I, for me as a watchmaker, I, I think we need to find a different thing. To oh, yeah, look, put this technology spin, in. If you spin uh, different, a different thing, to put the technology uh, yeah. in. What do you, what, I what, would what prefer you like a, a credit card. That's a simply a, card. a thick credit card screen, yeah. something like that, and then some other. If we need more space, some other device, a keychain, a cube, something that has all the the sensors and and everything else inside of it. Yeah, let me and see. And then when you need you, the, you just want yeah. to handle the like a piece of glass. Yeah, exactly. It's like just a, sing a when single you need piece a screen. of gorilla glass. Yeah, yeah, when you need a screen instead of hooking it into a computer for a big screen, mm-hmm. you just pull out your wallet and you can see the screen in your wallet. All right. Cameron, these, bad, right? Cameron these are these are so beautiful, man. Thank they you. They are. These are so beautiful. They're the best. I, I, put I, that put Cameron's watch on the I just, the, I, just, uh, I, the I, just I, I, lo- yeah, I love these watches, man. It's so handsome, dude. It's like I mean, like to me, like this is like something that you feel like your your grandfather. And this is how because to me, watches are also emotional, right? Um, and like because like it's like um, um, I feel he like needs my the big really strap too. I he feel needs like the long oh, yeah. extra. The, I have I got mine with the longer strap. So so badass. Yeah. So like to me, like like I always feel like my high end watches. Um, they're not really mine as much as I'm the caretaker. I know it sounds like a tag uh, yeah. to uh, tag hoyer. No, but the uh, Patek. Pat, Pat, it's Philippe, a Patek. Yeah. Line, but, yeah. uh, but it's kind of true, you know. What I mean, like they, they, I'm just going to give these to my kids one day, right? And this feels like an heirloom that. You know, like my, my great grandfather in World War One wore as a fighter pilot. You Listen know? to it; it's got it's such so a good hot. tick. Yeah, it's yeah. got such a satisfying tick. It's like a fucking time bomb. It's that was great. the intended. Can you, uh, can, you get, can you hear that? Mm, hang on, on. don't speak in that mic. I'm gonna turn it up. Not really. No, you'd, have, a, you'd have to like put yeah. a stethoscope on it. Can we do yeah. a, get a stethoscope camera? That's kind of. Uh, you know what? I, f- I actually be- filmed for my Instagram. I filmed one of the watches outside of the case, uh-huh. and I did a slow mo video, and it catches oh, it the does? TikTok noise. All right, yeah. we're gonna have to find that. Yeah. That's cool. I, I yeah, think I like it's a. Uh, it should be on my Instagram right now. If you wanna, is if you wanna it? pull it up, does Here the audio is. come through if we play a video? Um, right up at top. I don't. Right there. You know what? Right, the not audio might not come through. Hello. Hey, say hi to everybody. Are we are we doing <laughs> live? live? Uh, hello. Well, we're not going live. Live. All right. This hello. Is post, we're recording here, man. Don't do your social media. No. <laughs> um, I have a Studio question. B, man. Anything goes in Studio <laughs> B, brother. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, <laughs> can I talk to you about food truck race real quick? Yeah, of course you can, man. First yes. off, I have a question. Would you rather? Would you rather? Host cooking television shows, or would you rather cook and have oh, your man. restaurants? Beautiful watches. What would you rather? Thank do? you. Um, you know, um, assuming you, you, I mean, I know it's a, that's a bullshit question because no, you don't have to choose one, but they're no, both I, very time consuming. Well, so here's the deal. I mean, there are, th- uh, we take our business model one year at a time, right? And there are legacy things that I do, like my restaurants. I also manage a 40,000 case wine brand. Um, we, uh, I have two restaurants in San Francisco. We're actually about to go through a real big, um, restaurant push. I have four leases on my desk right now. I don't know if I'm gonna close all of them, um, but we're kind of like organizing them as a as kind of a new new a new project group. Um, and and to me, you know, it, it's a you, you. I don't think you can ever commit, right? You have to kind of let's see how it goes, mm-hmm. right? Because some things like you really can put all of your energy into it, and the world is just not kind of not feeling it, right? <laughs> and that happens, yeah. You know, I'm just not feeling it, right? Not that you didn't like give it your all everything you got, just not feeling it. But then other things you do and go, oh, I'm totally feeling that, right? So you really have to, you got to throw a bunch of things against the wall and kind of let them stick. And when they stick, sometimes they don't stick forever, right? So then you you can get a really good program going, like Great Food Truck Race, that you know we're about to shoot our ninth season. Yeah, it's been going on for a minute. Yeah, ninth season, dude. I mean, it's we've been, so awesome. I've been chasing taco trucks around for the better <laughs> part of a decade, dude. And we started that show it was just kind of ridiculous. I mean, the idea that you're gonna like the the pitch was what was the, what was the pitch? It was, it was like it was uh, taco trucks meets meet, can, meets Cannonball Run. Yeah. Right. That was that was just kind of what it was. It right? works. Now it, it was works. zany, wacky. A little characters. more amazing race than Cannibal Run, maybe. But yeah, you could throw a little flavor yeah. in there. It's good. But um, I would have loved to see Dom DeLuise in that shit. Right. When it been good. <laughs> Um, so, so anyway, so we, who knew that that would have turned to something that would would last for ten years, right? Well, you you got. I mean, it was you you sort of rode the wave of food truck popularity, right? As well, like food trucks since I don't know two thousand have been like, like all the way up. 
Are they on their way back down now? Well, I have you crested I, the. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I. I don't want to because I know there's a bunch of hardworking like food truck folks out there. So I, I don't want to. I don't want to say anything. But uh, but from the popularity standpoint, um, it, it's it seems like it seems like the uh, the genre has been discovered, right? So yeah. we we could, we could say that it's not like oh my god a food truck. People are like oh food trucks. They understand, right? Yeah. If someone so goes, I went to this great food truck. It's sort of like yeah, whatever. Yeah. My mother came to town and and that was her thing. She said, I got to eat at a food truck. What are, what are these food trucks? Well, they you find me a food truck. They serve a purpose. Yeah. But I feel like if you love, like, I, I, I'm a home cook, right? I just love it. I yeah. just love cooking. And I've always been like, this shit doesn't work out and uh-huh. start a food truck. But I feel like that is just, it's just never couldn't happen. What it's like that's a whole other world of things you don't expect. Well, so happen. well the interesting thing about food trucks, right? So let, I'll, I'll give you some back history. Right? So so the uh, the phenomenon became really mainstream in two thousand eight two thousand nine. Uh, during the economic recession, because that disposable the butterfly effect is amazing, right? So, so um, stock market crashed, disposable income dried up, and the first thing that people tighten their belt on is going out to dinner, right? Yeah. So then all of a sudden, restaurant reservations start to drop, and then chefs get fired, right? And then these guys have to practice practice their craft because they have their own family to feed, right? So the idea of kind of finding an alternative home for your craft people start looking around for less expensive venues to be able to kind of cook in. So the idea of going from four walls to four wheels happened in that transition time where, you know, like, listen, I'm famous, like raising 4 million bucks for a restaurant, it's hard, right? And then, you know, nine out of 10 restaurants never see their second birthday. That's a real fact. Yeah, even like famous chefs shut down. Yeah, so- Guy just shut down that, the the Times Square one. In New York, right. So so we, um, uh, dude, um, uh, 60, um, 67 restaurants closed in San Francisco last year, right? 110 open, but 67 closed, right? Mm-hmm. So the idea that that a lot of restaurants has never see the second birthday just because of the 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 enormous like operating expense, you know, like uh, uh, young restaurant groups that don't really know what they're doing, like the cash burn, chefs that don't understand food costs, yada yada, right? But with a food truck, dude. For thirty five, forty thousand bucks, right? So you, who are you borrowing that from? Your aunt, you know what I mean? Whatever yeah, it is, yeah. right? And if you lose it, she may not talk to you next Thanksgiving. But she, it's not the end the of the world. The bank's not taking your house. Exactly. Probably. Right? Exactly. Probably. You're not, you're, you're, or you're not going to get in a lifelong lawsuit. Or it whatever. feels like getting customers is so hard, though. So so hard. Well, it was so so. The, Social so, media has got to help. But. It, it it really really does. So so the so it is competitive in the food truck world, but also um, uh, a lot of neighborhoods really strangle. Uh, food truck operators and tell them what they can do and when they can do it and where they can do it, right? And where they can operate and they can operate here. And, and so so a lot of um, cities have these city ordinances that the community downtown will go, you know what? We pay rent here. We've been paying rent here. If this guy's going to come in and take our business selling $7 burritos, then we're going to you know rally together with city council and form an ordinance that no food trucks in downtown or yeah. you can only pile up in this block over here, right? But the thing about it, if if a nine dollar burrito intimidates you as a restaurant tour, you need to look inside yeah. yourself and go, okay, maybe maybe I'm, I'm maybe my my product's not as, as great as I want yeah. it to be, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because a food truck is a genre. With a truck, and you have a full size kitchen. Yeah, you know? dude. I mean, you know, like you like got you, a leg up. Well, look, you need to look internally yeah. and go, why is why my product should be more commercially competitive than it is, right? Yeah. Because I think rising tides float all boats. I think you get four or five, six food trucks in a parking lot or in a block, it actually it, it turns into a carnival right there on the spot. You know, young people are attracted to it. You know, there's something to do between A and B. It it creates a vibrancy, a late night vibrancy that feels alive in a town. Yeah. We right? have here in I live in Venice. We got the food trucks on Abbott Kinney first Fridays. It's like a huge deal. Yeah. And they bring out twenty of them. And it's not seven dollar burritos, by the way. It's twenty dollar fucking lobster rolls. <laughs> well, this is what I'm saying. You know, this is what like, I'm saying. So ROI, return yeah. on investment, is really, really high with a food truck, right? Yeah. Because you, if you do, let's say apples for apples, if you've got a twenty dollar check average and you do four hundred covers a day. Um, the the money you're putting to your pocket versus versus having a brick and mortar restaurant, yeah. right, and ten times the staff just because you have to. You can only you know, fit three people in a truck. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. So it forces you to be really really yeah. tight, and if you want to expand, you just literally go through cell division and do another one, right? Yeah. So it's kind of an interesting model, man. So so out of out of chaos 
comes order, right? I mean, we, you know, this is where artists really, really shine uh, through, you know, really, really tough times. I mean, some of the most beautiful art of the last century came after World War II. Yeah. So, like, so like artists just create, you know, when their back's up against the wall, they're the most creative. And, and that's where the, the food truck genre came from. Do you then, do you see uh, people rising out of the show? And, you know, like, you know, Roy Choi is like the king of L.A. You yeah. know, to go from the Kogi trucks to brick and mortar, and now he's got fine dining and, you know, L.A. Weekly and Jonathan Gold and all that crazy shit from right. trucks. You know, do you see a lot of that, or is that a very, very rare exception? Um, we're seeing a lot of that, right? So um, a few of the winners, there's a, the Lime Truck from Season 2, and Soul Sausage. I, I forget what season oh, it was. I know Soul five. Sausage. I've, had, I've eaten a Soul Sausage before. Yeah, yeah it's good. Th- those were, they, really they, good. They, we broke them on, uh, well, they, they broke themselves like uh, as, as a brand on, on Great Food Truck Race, and they won. And so the idea that you could, you could uh, just get out there and iterate your idea, right? And there's not, in my opinion, there's not enough venues for creative people to do a food truck kind of thing yeah. out in the wild and just test it, right? Let's just throw out there and yeah, test you it. Yeah, because you could just wrap up a truck for like a thousand bucks. You could wrap your truck, and if it sucks, you could just change your whole restaurant and wrap your truck in something else. Yeah, like if it, right if, away. If it crashes, yeah. right, yeah. then you reskin it and you go back to Costco and you yeah. go back out tomorrow. You know <laughs> what I mean? Try, I, well, uh, burgers didn't work. Uh, let's try Chinese food. Here bang, you go. right. Didn't, did Exlet start as a truck too? I think Yeah, Exlet. they were a truck. Exlet might have. Yeah. Very, you know that place? You ever heard of Exlet? So oh, the, excellent! Yeah, of course yeah. I have. Yeah, of course they I have. They brought yeah. the bacon, egg, and cheese to Los Angeles and yeah. charged you ten bucks for the privilege. Excellent's great, man. They, Ex- there's one three blocks from my house. It's very dangerous. See, <laughs> Excellent, Excellent is another prime example of of uh, a vehicle to test a concept out there in a relatively inexpensive, benign way, and they nailed it. Right? Yeah. I mean, so this yeah, is they sell so, four things, right? And they're great at it. So, so this, so so that if you could just go slightly just north of that and you make a uh, sort of a, a uh, a um, vertical line between a food truck and let's say Shake Shack, right? So, so um, all of those restaurants and that sort of genre, they're, they're, it's uh, it's called um, uh, a QSR plus or quick service restaurant at a premium, right? So Shake Shack is a premium, Exlut is a premium, right? Mm. But it's a handheld thing. Um, the restaurant's super duper focused. They've got four or five things on the menu, um, and they just do those really, really well, right? Yeah. So they have more money to put in fewer, better ingredients to make a better quality product. You see a lot of it in LA where it's the order at the counter and then sit down at the table with the number kind of thing. You well, know what well, I mean? The, well, yeah, well, th- that's because restaurants are too expensive to operate. Yeah, yeah. And land- landlords are killing the restaurant business, dude. I'm telling you, it is predatory leasing out there. Uh, anybody listening to this, like young, <laughs> well, this is what I'm saying. So we have to stand up as a group and, and really kind of push back on this phenomenon called um, called the. Uh, well, I'm, I'm blanking on my, my leasing terms. Yeah, right? I understand like, it. We tried to move to to downtown LA, and every single manufacturing space zoned for yeah. uh, hardcore. Like this is M1 space manufacturing yeah. only. Every single landlord would say, "Oh no, we're we're rezoning to restaurant." Right, and oh, this really? is a nasty space. Because you that can was just take this, yeah, and, you take an ugly space yeah. and turn it into you know whatever. Yeah, it's but the, the so zoning. That guy, good so, luck with the yeah. environmental downtown. So that I look at these places, happened. and it's been three years since we wanted to move there, and they're still yeah, vacant, it'll take trying them to rezone. twenty years to un- undo but the when environmental. They, when in they LA, do re- rezone, they want like fifteen bucks a square foot. As opposed to one dollar a square on foot it for four years, right, yeah. right. But but so there's 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 a phenomenon called percentage rent, right? And this is literally predatory leasing, right? So um so there's a base rent, and then and then there's usually usually triple nuts. So that means you got to pay for everything inside the building. And if your building is adjacent to other properties, there's things called cam charges. That's like community community area maintenance, right? So there's like the whoever sweet yeah, and the stuff, exactly. Yeah. So that's another that's another additional charge. And then and then and then there's a percentage rent charge they put on top of that. So they they really want not only base rent but they want a piece of your bottom line and it's not even bottom line it's top line right so they'll end up taking somewhere between three to six percent i've seen some really really aggressive models out there and as a restaurateur if you have to go raise money raise 2.3 three whatever is three million dollars to put into a restaurant you're only talking about taking home 10 percent of bottom line <clears throat> and then you got to split that with your business partner who gave you the money in the first place, and then you got to pay you got to pay taxes on top of that. So that's what you get to spend. This right? sounds really glamorous. But, but, but the, <laughs> a food truck sounds nice right food now. Truck, it does, food right? Yeah. You know what sounds better? Hosting the show, <laughs> right? <laughs> About right. The food truck. TV. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. got for food network. But but yeah. what I'm saying is like so. But but uh, but the percentage rent number is is a new phenomenon that that you know quietly you know real estate groups and and and. Uh, 
you know, um, um, like development groups have, have been insisting on that if you want to get in this particular space, th- there's a new tax on, on being in the restaurant business called percentage rent, and it's choking out the vitality of New York City. It's choking out the vitality I mean, of San legal? Francisco. Well, it's because it's it's like it's what everybody will pay for. It's it's sort of like the yeah. it's the going market of, of, of real estate, right? So the it's more only in those A cities, or is this happening in like you know Detroit and Memphis and stuff? Uh, as I, well? You know, I've never looked at a lease in Detroit or Memphis, but but I I can only assume it's it's fairly consistent because like how dominant you know a few big players are in yeah. real estate markets around the world. Anyway, like as, as a chef and as as a as a as a as a, as a, as a lover of city culture. Um, landlords are choking out the vitality of of restaurants, which is the culture that everybody brags about, right? I mean, huh. San Francisco, we yeah. kind of have a big homeless problem, right? And then, and also, um, the, there's a uh, um, oh God, you know, with uh, I'm, I don't have all my my stats ready, but but um, um, but the um, the uh, there's so many abandoned spaces in San Francisco. There's so many abandoned restaurant spaces, and they're they're abandoned and they stay abandoned, and nobody's coming. They're not going to flip it over like there's a new sucker every day. Yeah, yeah. So as rents start, yeah, to where end, where does that breaking point? Well, when this is, is well, happen? it's it's happening, right? So so there, there's it's almost like to the point where there's a huge like the bubble just needs the burst for the sake of the city, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it's not like landlords aren't making a killing. There, it's not that they aren't making the money. Plus, let me tell you. So so landlords also so they. They have an exit strategy because they can sell the building, right? But as a restaurant owner, it's only about cash flow. You're only creating a business and unless you have multiple units and you have like outback steakhouse that somebody wants to buy. But if you have a one off restaurant, it's just about cash flow. Yeah, yeah. Right? Your your business will only be as successful as the life of the lease. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'll I'll participate in money from this business for ten years, fifteen and then, years. And then you just you gotta be ready to just walk away. If, if it well, yeah, because like because like there there will be rent increase, right? Yeah, yeah. Like so every time so this is what I'm saying. So like, so the idea that that a landlord could 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 take such a small percentage and then insist on going after those crumbs if you want to be mm-hmm. here, and what happens out of that? Because like they've all sort of like gotten together and said, okay, here's the norm that that people just can't afford to be in business. Right. At any point, do you ever get famous, successful, wealthy enough where you go, fuck them? I'm gonna own my properties. Well, yeah. So, I mean, I, I think that's definitely the long haul. But, I mean, again, if you think about buying a building. Yeah, I right? mean, the building is going to outlast whatever concept you've got. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, right? A real, they don't, they're not going to make any more real estate. So it's yeah. always a kind of a smart model. If, if, if you are lucky enough to be able to, you know, raise capital at that level to buy the building and then, and then op- also own and operate the business on the inside. That's definitely the way to go. This is the reason that some of these like off, you know, the not not the alpha and beta cities, but the gamma cities become really more popular just because you know you can actually own a restaurant there and make a living. That's why I bring up Detroit. I, I there's some really great things happening in Detroit, food wise. People can yeah. afford to buy a space, right? And they're not putting up a lot of red tape. If someone wants to spend money, they'll let you spend money, exactly. You know, and, and buy a spot. Yeah, I'm happy to be there. That was all, Tyler. Man, what I think I think we did a good show there. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> was that it was a good show? It's a yeah. good show. I yeah, think we need fun. to get one of Cameron watches on your wrists dude i, yeah, I would yeah, love to we've been talking about it forever i, I i'll, I'll definitely buy one I, I think they're really really stunning congratulations on your success man thank you um i uh, i'm a big fan of mr porter like the yeah i'm, yeah. A, I'm, a, I'm what they call a, a clothes whore mm. <laughs> and uh and i noticed that you guys had, had kind of gotten into that mix and it's kind of a baller place to be i mean it's, a, it's sort of a creating a new like visibility for your product and uh, and like young people that just get up and they just do it right Really passionate about. This. I, I feel like we're we're in the dawn of this new uh, era of of the the craft person making things like this new industrial revolution on a small scale of people just reinventing all these brands and and your watches are really great, man. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Vinyls yeah. up. It's good for him. Yeah, yeah people right. are buying records. That's good for watchmakers. Oh, no, right? that's, that's cool, man. It's good yeah, for everybody. Totally cool. Tyler Florence, thank you for coming, man, and thank, thank all of you for listening. We'll see you next week on Watch and Listen. Peace.